Good evening all, hope you're all well. Sorry if the sound was a little strange there. Let's see if this is working. Okay, so... As soon as we get the audio and video confirmations, I will start yapping. Um, and I would if my KVM was going to behave. Okay, it moves there. Does it move on the other machine? No, it does. Excellent. Cool. Right, so... First off, the important stuff. Good evening to the people who who are here. I am sorry I gave out the wrong day for this stream. It is indeed Wednesday, not Thursday. So hello to bug number 13, Darius Jace, Energy Z Bot, Freddy Bot. Well, they've got a lot of bots in today. <laughs> Mackle72, Blonde Pimp, Roots Jr., R Primus, and Chimera. Um, I'm sure we would have a few more if I had said the right day. So, first order of business, like the reason the Tailspire stuff is up on the screen, just to remind me that I've got news. I will not be streaming the next two weeks because sometime in that period of time, uh, we will be having a Kickstarter. And I am just not going to be mentally available to do anything but that. If you like what I do, if you want to support me, if you are interested in pen and paper role playing games, or just want a sense of love my way, keep an eye out. Sign up for the newsletter. We will be letting you know when this is happening. If you're on the Discord or the newsletter or any of the places where Tailspire is, um, we will let you know if that happens. It would mean the world to me. Um, and it would also be pretty cool to finally get a game like this made. Right. Pitch out of the way. Just to let you know, I will not be around. And the other thing I had to remember was Jason's stream. I believe there is an upcoming stream for... Um, threading and such in um, Common Lisp. Um, he will have the details if they come up in the chat. Thank you for the love for the Kickstarter. Um, yes, if that comes up in the chat, I will relay it to the video. And uh, yes, I would, I'm hoping I will be free to come on down for that because that would be really cool. Um, so yes, that's the other thing I was meant to do. I think that is the lot. Okay, so... What are we doing today? Today we are going to be looking at marching cubes, which is a way of taking a distance or density field and turning it into a mesh, polygonizing, basically. Um, the reason we're going to do marching cubes and not one of the other better or more interesting uh, variants is that it's early on in the history of these kind of routines, and most papers refer back to the things that have come before them. So it makes sense for us to take a simple implementation of marching cubes, implement it ourselves, and then we can use that as a reference. Um, and Darius, you are a star. Just pointed out the uh, last time I said I wanted to say something about RenderDoc. I did. We did the episode of RenderDoc a few weeks ago. And after that stream, um, I got reached out to by uh, Baldi UK, who's the person that makes RenderDoc, and was absolutely charming. And a really, really nice chap. And he reported on things he saw in the stream. Uh, the first was that memory link, the massive memory expansion we were getting, was indeed a memory leak. And it was due to the fact that we were doing things in a really ridiculous way. Most, like, in any normal, like, GL program, you're going to bind a UBO once when a program is created and then never unbind it. Never worry about it again, because it's essentially like memoize that, that binding is stored on the program. But we were binding them, tons of them, every single frame, just because it was easy. We, it was just dead easy for us to write it that way. And we weren't caring about performance or really caring about anything at all. Um, and so that was the cause of the memory leak. There were also a couple of other little things that confused us or tripped us up that he saw. Um, ha has also put in fixes to render up already, and the new versions are out. So go get them. And uh, I just, yeah, th that was really cool. And it was nice that, um, yeah, basically we got to do that. That was that was really awesome. Um, sh apparently Shamara has some cool stuff out as well. Let's get this. We should do a little section of the, the week in Common Lisp News. So what have we got here? Um, portability. What is this? It's a metadata project to document the coverage of portability libraries across the many Lisp implementations. It hopes it allow people to quicker overview of non-standard features and to encourage people to contribute the projects. Yeah, cool. That is interesting. Okay, so it is a site. Nice. That is very cool. Yeah, that's just a really solid overview. I didn't know Triple Features wasn't on everything. That's really cool. Nice. Okay, I'm going to have to browse through that someone because that's really dope. Thanks for the link. Um, let's jump to what we will be doing today. 
Um, we are going to be looking at marching cubes. Let me dump the link into the chat. Here you go. Right. So yes, while it is not the greatest way of doing this, it is the, it is an old and well-known implementation. So we are going to do it. And um, yeah, we're going to start looking at um, these articles by Boris the Brave. And this one is about doing it in 2D. Uh, we're kind of going to skim through these. And all we're going to do is we're going to get to the implementation in 3D and we're going to translate it from Python over into Lisp and see if we can get it to run. And that will be that, that should be enough to do in a session. Um, so yes, here is the idea. We're going to have a function um, that we're going to evaluate along points in the grid. We're going to make a grid and it, like for each cube, each square, we're going to evaluate the function at the corners and it's going to tell us something. Um, we, it's going to be a density function or a distance function. Um, and if you're inside whatever it represents, then it's going. the um, values are going to be signed one way and you're outside signed another way. So for example, let's say that the function returns positive numbers on the inside and negative numbers on the outside. That boundary, that point where they cross zero, that's the surface of the object. And this is called an implicit surface um, or again, common names, distance functions and things like this. But this technique will work equally well with, um, say, density information you might get out of an MRI. Point cloud data you get from different scanning devices and things like this. So it is like th these kinds of data sources are around a lot. One of the things you could do if you've got point cloud information is you could blast that into an oak tree and then you could sample across the oak tree. You could sample across the grid, but looking into the oak tree to find the values that you need. So that is super cool. Um, so this is a general idea. We're going to walk along and we are going to sample a function. We're going to get a value at each point and some of them will be considered inside and some of them are going to be outside. Um, and what else is there some chat going on? Oh, there's some information um, about the threading thing. So, okay, so Jace is saying, yeah, it isn't mine exactly, uh, but the Atlanta Functional Programming does a weekly common lisp stream. Uh, every Saturday, 1.30, and we're going to find out the time zone for that soon. And the next session, or possibly a couple of sessions, are going to be talking... Um, oh, he's going to be taking the lead to discuss multi-threading and concurrency with a meetup, uh, which links to a Hangout. So if you want to be in the actual chat... Um, yeah, if you want to be in the actual chat and we stream to YouTube. Okay, so there's a limited number of people in the Hangout, but yeah, they check out YouTube as well. So that's really cool. Um so that is 130 EDT by the sound of it. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. So that's it. 130 EDT. Common Lisp Atlanta functional programming stream. That's going to be really cool. Okay. So given this function that we have, which is defining this uh, implicit service, then we're going to go through and we're going to look at the corners. We're going to look at the values at each of the corners of the squares. And depending on which ones are inside and which ones are outside, we're going to draw a certain line. Um, and a lookup table provides the 16 combinations that you could have. As you can see here, nothing. And you have no line. You have this one down here, you get a little corner. You get two corners and you get a line across. You get one on each side and this area would be solid and these ones would be uh, outside the shape. I think it's pretty easy to see these different configurations would line up and all that kind of stuff. And then, so you gradually build up this kind of lower resolution representation of that function that you have. So if you repeat that over all the cells, you get something like this. So you get a solid mesh. Um, and it's, like he says, it's kind of like the original circle, but everything's rather angular because these are the only primitives we're working with. So there's this adaptation um, phase and so what you can do is you can move these points based on some function. Um, so let's have a look at this. Actually, we'll just read this section because it's probably best to take it straight from here. So the best way to fix the fact that all the lines are at 45 degrees is adap adaptive marching cubes, or marching squares in this case. Um, rather than merely setting all boundary vertices from the cell midpoints, um, they can be spaced to best match the underlying solid. To do this, we need to know more than what it, we just used, uh, whether a point is inside or outside. We also need to know how deep it is. 
Um, this means we need a function that gives us some measure of how far inside or outside it is. It doesn't need to be precise, um, as we're only using it for approximations. Um, so they have an. This is the function they're using for the circle. So we can do a quick detour on that. Um, one of the ways you could. Let's have a look here. Define circle of a certain radius. And you have a V3 point. What you could do is we're going to say this is a circle around the origin. And we want to know, given is this point inside or outside of it. So what you can do is radius minus, um, let's do V3 um, length of V3 point. OK, so the distance from the origin so if it was, say, say if the, let's just compile this. Say if the radius is three and we pass in two, well, that's not gonna work. One <laughs> what am I doing? Sorry, one second. Let's actually give some sensible values here. Um, okay, we can see that we are inside, it's positive. And if we were sampling at five, which is outside our circle, we can see it's minus two. And we get this kind of gradient that's going down. So this is the distance function. And at three, um, the value is zero. And that's the skin of our object, the surface. Um, so this is the function they're using. As you can see, 2.5 is 2.5 units in size. Square root of x squared plus y squared. So this is length, distance, whatever you prefer. Um, so we can see, yes, when all the positive values are inside and negative values are outside. We can use then sorry we can then use the numerical values of f on either side of the edge to determine how far along to put the point. So yeah, we're just going to interpolate and we're going to pick a position for the point. And so this is exactly the same number as points as this one, but they've all been shifted towards the surface, and you get a much better representation. Um, so yes, this is this is the general idea. We're going to have a function which says inside or outside. We're going to sample. We're going to have um, split space up into um, a grid or into cubes in, in the version we'll be doing. We'll be sampling the corners of those cubes. We'll be using that information to look up in, like in a lookup table to see where we should be putting edges. And then we're going to be pushing those edges around a little um, with an adapting function. That's cool. So that's the general 2D idea. But that's not what we want to look at today. So we're going to jump over to 3D. Um, but it's the basic... Uh, same idea again, right? So let's uh, let's look at this. So we, we've already talked about the dividing space up into a grid, and then for each vertex in the grid, evaluate uh, whether the point is inside or outside the solid. All right, so let's do this. Um, the good news is it works almost identically in the three-dimensional case. We divide up space into a grid of cubes, consider them each individually, draw some faces in each cube, and they'll join up to, to form the desired Boundary mesh. The bound uses that cubes have eight corners. So there are 256 possible cases to consider, and some of the cases are more complicated than before. And the thing is, this stuff has all been worked out before. Naturally, this is an old technique, and they've worked out the different permutations and things like this. So what we're going to use is a pre-existing lookup table, um, and we'll be spared actually doing the hard work of computing what sensible surfaces would be. Um, Right, and yet one of the things you'll see if you go and actually dig into the papers on this stuff is that many of these are reflections or rotations of each other, um, which is quite cool if you want to compute that and not use the storage, but we have a lot of storage. So it's not, again, the 256 different cases aren't really a problem to us. Um, and that is why, if you check the Wikipedia article, or most tutorials, you'll see only needs 15 cases, but here he's talking about 18 different cases uh, which can be flipped and rotated and all this kind of stuff. And the reason is you actually get th these three cases are kind of fiddly. And I, I, it's strange when people are saying 15 cases, I don't... Um, I don't think, I can't remember if it's like there's some holes or like it just doesn't fit very well. One second, let's have a look. Uh, both the second and third columns um, correctly separate the solid corners from the empty ones 
but only if when you consider a single cube in isolation. If you look at the edges on each face of the cell, you'll see they are different for the second and third column. The inverted one won't, well, yeah, the inverted ones won't connect up properly with adjacent cells, leaving holes in the surface. So to me, that says 15 is actually the wrong answer. 18 is the correct one. This is the minimum number you need, and you can flip and rotate and all that kind of stuff, which is grand. But again, we don't need to save that kind of storage so we can um, use just a lookup table and that's what we're going to do um, so that's actually the extent of his uh, descriptions but really we don't need much more the rest of it is in the uh, python implementation that he's provided and yes it's rather good so we're going to start there okay I suppose I should tell you as well that I have completely ripped apart the project uh, that we normally use so Meta Yan, this will be important for you. I'm, I know you're not here at the moment, but um, it's probably because I told you the wrong day. <laughs> um, so yes, if you go to play with verts, you'll now see there are very few things. We have the base list file, which is this. We have our main loop. Um, we have the function that steps each time um, it clears to green. Let's just run it. Um, we're still getting that delay. I need to find out what that is. That's very strange. Because once I do this, like if I, oh, I didn't show it very well, but if I stop and clear and then start again, it's instant. I'm not sure what that setup time is right there. Um, but regardless, it's fine. Um, now we actually don't need force either, so let's remove that. Stop. CLS start make sure everything's still working yes okay so this is all we've got just a pink screen I've actually gone into the render file as well and removed everything none of the stuff we normally have is there um, so we are going to be starting somewhat from scratch because I thought it'd be nice to do that for a change the only thing I have definitely left is the camera code because it's really boring to deal with and uh, yeah I didn't want to do that again so let's bring up the Python code and we're just going to go and start transcribing it. So we're going to say marching cubes is going to be the file. And we're doing play with verts. If I can hit the right keys, that would be helpful. Okay. So what we're going to see very quickly is this big old table down here. These are the 256 cases we were talking about, right? Um, If you want to follow this at home, you can look up this project and you can see from here how to generate this table. Um, we're not going to do that. We're just going to copy and paste. We're basically just transcribing this thing into Lisp and getting it to work is the goal. Um, each index is the bitwise representation of what is solid. Each value in the list of each value is a list of triples indicating what edges um, are used for that triangle. So this is indexing into this edge table. And these edges are referring um, to this vertices table. So this is telling us how to connect all these things up. And so I guess the first thing to do really is to transcribe these. So let's go and do that. Um, I missed one down here. Let's take those commas out. Um, And def parameter much nicer. Whoops. One down. Actually, tell you what, let's take all of this. Let's go and change. Ah, what are we going to do? Um, we're going to change every opening square bracket to be hash open paren. Uh, we're going to change every closing square bracket to be close paren. Uh, we're going to take every comma and get rid of it. 
we are going to wonder if there's anything else to do. Yes, we just need to take these. Turn them into arrays, and then we can do the death parameter thing again. And I will be checking on the chat in just a second. Nice, so hopefully, if I haven't cocked that up, yeah, there we go. So that's done. Let's look. Down to lower case because we can. Median, there you are. Sorry, I didn't see you when I started up. Oh, I'm glad you can make it. That's awesome. Sorry about giving the wrong information. Uh, bug number 13. How about CL Python? I haven't actually used that. Mm, yes, random loud noises. Excellent. All right, let's have a look at what we're doing next. Now, we've got that data. So let's go and read from main and see what's going on. Okay, so this um, is writing an object file demonstrating the main cases of marching cubes. We don't need that. We're only interested in the implementation of marching cubes, uh, which means we don't need make cases object. We're only interested in make circle object. Um, so that is where we will start, which is here. And we're gonna look at this and we're gonna see that it makes a mesh using marching cubes 3d uh, which is apparently there and then it opens a file and writes it out using make objects which is probably in another file yes it's from 3d utilities but again we're not going to be saving out a obj file because we're just going to stick it in some vertex buffers and try and render it um, so that's cool so what should we do now Let's go and fly a kite. Um, here we go. So, Marching Cubes 3D takes an F, which, and a bunch of stuff that's already defaulted out. So we'll have to go and see what those values are in, in that case. But again, I think this is just the range that we're iterating over. Um, so let's actually go and have a look at those quickly and get them out of the way. Settings. Yeah, so minus three to three. Well, that's very small, isn't it? That's tiny. We're going to go much further than that, hopefully. Anyway, yes. So we've got some mins and we've got some maxes and we have an f, which is a function. And that function being passed in is the circle function. This is the one that we looked at before, which is the, um, what is it? The radius minus uh, the distance of this point from the origin of the circle. So let's write that again. So defun, is that in base? We can just go and grab it. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Um, so now we've got a circle function. So defun, do it. Um, we are going to call, let's make ourselves a march function which is going to take in something that's just going to wrap up this circle we're going to set the radius to three point yes yeah, just three float and it takes passes x in that's all we're going to do so we're going to march so we better def define march so march is going to take um the distance or density function i want to say density function um, and we're going to do some stuff with it. So, for we're going to have some kind of result. Okay. Now we're going to be producing. Yeah, let, let's let's make a mesh type for this. I think what we're actually going to be producing is a list of verts and a list of indices. And I think in the end we might actually remove the indices, but. I know that this tutorial is producing indices, so we'll start there. And I'm going to make an array. Um, and then I'm going to remember that it really helps if I have um, hints on. So line enable um, concurrent hints, like that. 
So dimensions are going to be zero. Element type, um, we're not going to worry about yet. <laughs> we'll do that later. Um, actually, yeah, no, fuck it, doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to say it's adjustable, true, and its fill pointer is zero. Right, so now this is ready to go. This is an extendable array that we can use. We'll produce two of those, um, and I'm an idiot, apparently. Oh yeah, because this is meant to be, I've got to tell what this is, init form. This is what the value is initially. I'll break it down to a new line just for the sake of this slow resolution. Oh yeah, by the way, a really cool thing. Um, I finally got the color space to be more acceptable on OBS working with this capture device. It was related to the um, the color range in the settings for the capture device in OBS, which I'm absolutely sure I tried before. But one of the things that really sucks with this device is, in, in, at least in OBS, whenever I change the settings, it would tell, tend to freeze before like permanently um and i would have to restart obs and i would tend to lose things and so i was never really sure if it worked or not um but before today this gray and this white were the same color and now you can actually see that there's a difference so i'm pretty happy about that um it's still not quite right compared to what i'm seeing on this screen but it's pretty close it's close enough for us to be able to work uh which is great um no flickering, at least. That's great. Um, yes, I actually, the bulb that I was using in this lamp right next to my desk, I've swapped out now um, to a more recent LED. So I think it's strobing at a different frequency. And yeah, it's not troubling for the cameras. Okay, so um, let's let, let's make a mesh. We can make an instance of mesh. And then we are going to loop for x from um, minus 10 to 10 um, and then do let's just copy this oops Okay, x, y, and z. We're going to step over all that range. And then we are going to So what is this? Mesh extend cell mesh. That's interesting. Let's have a look at this. So I guess this mesh type isn't in here. So where is that from? That's in utils 3D. see what this thing has got so it has verts and it has faces okay yes so faces are going to be the indices um extend okay so it takes face dot map f for face in other faces so other is the thing that's passed in. We get the faces out of there. We take each face in turn and we call map.f on it. Um, what is f in this case? Okay, so it's this function. I'm not used to Python lamp syntax, actually. That's interesting. So I've got distracted now. Um, plus l. Okay, so it's, again, I, I'm i not entirely convinced we need this, but sure. Um, I don't like the way this does it, so like we're gonna do it slightly differently. We'll get to that. That's that's not a big deal right now. All I think we're actually gonna do is do this um, march cell function, passing in the density function, passing in um, x, y, and z as a vector, passing in um, mesh. March a cell, taking the density function, the position, um, I'm just, yeah, say position, and mesh. Cool, right. So now we're in there. 
let's compile this. Everything's happy except this, which is complaining that we're not doing anything with these values, which is correct. So now we get to the fun stuff. And then we'll see how all this works together. Ooh, let's put this up at the top. Okay, so the first thing it does is it allocates a little array of eight things. So let's make an array of length eight, and we'll see how much of this is necessarily necessary later. Let's go with the same naming scheme. Um, Python does not support multi-line lambdas. <laughs> Log number 13, yeah, this has a lot of parens when you compare it to Python. It certainly does. But, yeah. It's funny, it, like, Lisp is, like, the only, Common Lisp at least, is the only other language other than Python that I found to be really relaxing to be in. You know, it's like a nice space to be. Um, yeah. Well, will wax lyrical on that about now, but it's, uh, yeah, interesting to me. All right, make an array of eight things, which I've not currently set. Um, loop right below eight and we are going to do some stuff so do um let's actually move this up what the hell um nope i'm wrong okay so v pos is vertices v so where is it getting that from okay so Vertices is this stuff up here. Let's see what it's doing with it. So we can say for VPOS equals AREF vertices. Let's use the same variable name. So it's V. Um, and then it goes setF. Well, that's kind of interesting. Isn't it? Oh, well, never mind. Let's, let's go with this. Keep on trying to change the code already. I know I really shouldn't, but never mind. Uh, so f, f of eval of v to b. Um, fun called density function with um, ah okay right. So we're getting getting each for each of the corners. So th this is the position we're currently at, and then we add. each of these in turn to create our new positions that we're interested in and that's where we're going to sample the function um, so v3 plus um, position and vpos so what it would actually be kind of cool to do is to change all of these to be this right because then we can just use our vector functions and that's fine <laughs> all right so with that done determine which case we're in so let's star again let's have a C case is we're going to, doing everything with loops oh yeah no so um i'm gonna call this m case just because it isn't a reserved name and loop for uh v below eight and then if let's bring this down if um Wow, we're going to leave out of this function a bunch of times, aren't we? Um, hold on, one second. Oh, right, yes, we're, we're looking up in this now. Okay, so if RF F eval. Um, oh, okay, right, let's have a look at this. So what we're actually doing here is we're going... So v from zero for a across f eval, right? So for each value in f eval, 
or each density or whatever. And then we're just counting up from zero along with that. Um, what a strange way of doing it. Um, then we do two to the power of, yeah, we sum um, two to the power of V. Is that something we can do? I can't actually remember. Oh yeah, so sum is supported. That's fine. In loop. Um, and then faces is a ref cases case. So in case um, M case. So in case it wasn't clear what we're doing here. Um, oh, oops. We are creating essentially like we're almost like bit shifting a mask together. We're making um, a number between zero and two five five, um, depending on. Oh wait a second, we haven't got our if in here, have we? Um, when d is greater than zero, and we don't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That won't work because the elements of lit, uh, vector literals aren't evaluated. Well, sorry, one second. Let's have a look. I'm missing something here. Um, Mark Amato is saying um, it's a good thing Python supports lambdas at all. I think Greedo was um, planning on removing them from Python 3, but ended up changing his mind. Yeah, that's for the best. <laughs> But then again, they're kind of balked, so it doesn't almost make sense to remove them. It's better to not have a feature than to have a bad one. Um, that won't work because the elements of vector literals aren't evaluated. Oh, shit, really? Okay. Whoops. Well, there's our first problem. That's hilarious. Really? Oh, I see this one. I'm really interested in that. So if we if we look at vertices here, this will be funny. Yes, area for vertices zero is the list. Um, does this work? Because if I remember correctly, oops, quasi quote doesn't just work on. Hold on, what? Yeah, there we go. Quasi quote works across arrays as well. Um, so you can do a or f zero now we're getting that array yeah that should work yep yep um that's not very pretty though so we, I mean, we could just change it to, oh, fuck, let's not worry about that there <laughs> we've got something that'll do thank you for catching that though that would have uh that really tickled me in about half an hour or so when we finally try and run this thing. Um, I freaked out for a second because I thought, how is it nearly 10 o'clock already? Yeah, of course, we pushed it back an hour. We're only half an hour in. Don't worry about it, Chris. Right, so we're creating our little mask. Uh, we're using that as an index into the faces list. And that will give us into the cases list. And then we get faces from that, which is uh, OK. Yep, that's uh, naming is interesting, but sure. And here we have a local function. So I'm going to actually shove that up here. Labels, we'll come to that in a minute. This is edge to boundary vertex. I'm taking in an edge. Um, to do. All right, in fact, I want that to be a bit more visible. So I'm just going to stick a load of ads here so they shine up nice and blue. Um, okay, so ignoring that, we've got output verts and output tries. Um, and this is where we're going to start slightly deviating from the original scheme. Because what it looks to, so what, what happens then is that. For each of the faces we just grabbed here, let me remove this output. We're going to loop through those. 
Um, and each face is this is a list of edges apparently. Um, and th so this is so this to me an edge index. Is this is an index into the edges list that's up further up near the top of this file. Um, And so then we take those edges, so like say these ones here, we map them through this function, which is gonna return a position, that's the position of our vertex. Um, and then they're gonna turn that into a list by the look of it. So is this function, does this put something in a list in Python or does this turn something into a list? As in, as in this thing here, well, yeah, what is, what is the type of, of this? I'm guessing it's a list. We'll see soon. And the next vert index is the length of output verts. So this plus one. Um, and then we go, so yes, one, two, three. Interesting. And then the outputs are extended and the output triangles are like we extend with verts and we, uh, and we append the triangle and then we create a new mesh and that's what's returned and then joined onto the other mesh it's a little bit strange because each time we're making a triangle right each time we're making a standalone triangle so I don't know why we need an index list at all. Because we can with GL we can just render like the triangles. We just we can just pass in a list of triangles without indices, um, and that's fine. It's not like we're re we're not reusing any ind indices here. So there's no real advantage to doing this. So I think we're going to take quite a large detour from the original plan now, and that is we're going to get rid of indices entirely. Um, this array is going to have an element type of uh, VEC3, if I remember correctly, yes. Um, there we go. And so then really we don't actually need this. We don't need a mesh type because it's just a list of verts. So let's go and put this down here. Lay this out a bit, do that. This is our verts thing, where we're passing in mesh, we're just gonna pass in verts. We have march cell, pass in verts. And then down here, when we do the funky thing, we're going to say loop for face across faces. Um, if this is exactly this, then this is this. So. edges across faces surely getting some info on things here guess the list is to is to evaluate the map otherwise you get back a map object oh that's good to know thank you that makes sense no no that, that's good thank you very much that's uh, that explains that it's been a long time since I did Python Okay, so yeah, they're producing a, a list of things here. So what we're actually gonna, just going to do is we're going to, for edges across faces, do loop for, we're going to have to clean this up later on, but we don't really need to though. Okay, for, um,
edge index across edges do edge to boundary vertex passing in now oh, just passing in the edge isn't it edge index right so that's gross but it is written um, and this is actually for verts equals that um, and then we get back to the outer loop again and then we say uh, for neck oh this is index stuff blah 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 okay so now we've got three we've got a bunch of verts Again, I don't even think we need to, like, what are we doing when we get them back out? We're packaging them up in objects and we're shoving them in a thing so we can return them. We don't actually need to do that. All we're going to do is in here, uh, we're going to push the values into the list and we're going to return uh, values because we're actually not returning anything here. Um, Edge to boundary vertex, it's complaining because undefined function. That's because I didn't push this label statement around here. Um, and up here, we are going to call this edge index for my sanity. We're going to jump back up to here, and then we are going to do some things. So let's start. We are going to, let's see. Um, we're going to call these ver indices. This is the aref of edges with our edge index. Um, then we've got we're going to evaluate the function at each of those points. So yeah, f zero is fine. So fun call. Density function. Um, ah, this is where space is limited, so I'm going to pick a bad variable name for a second so I can work with it. F1 is 1. T0 is. Okay, so this is. So Let's have a look at what's going on there. We sample the function at either end. Then we, that's interesting actually. Let's look at this. Edges are integers and we're passing them into a function that was expecting floats. So let's just do this for now. Right. This will matter later if we decide to speed it up. Um, and then what we've got is like that function is going to return, what's it returning? A single float value. And then this is a lerp. This looks to me very similar at least to a, a, a kind of stable lerp. Let's just look at um, REPL. Let's go to, oh, let's just. Look. Yeah, there we go. So we have a start, an end, and an amount. Start, end, amount. And it's... Is that correct? One minus, let's have a look at this. You know what, let's just write it the way they've got it and then we'll uh, come back and see what we have here. But it looks to me like a lerp between two positions. Um, yeah, cool, let's keep trucking. Um, 
one minus adapt. We'll do the adapt function soon. F0, F1. And the reason I'm keeping things in floats in a bunch of places is I do want to make this very easy for us to shove straight into up to the GPU very soon. So I don't want just a bunch of arrays of integers because um, it's just not going to help us. Um, T1 is 1 minus T0. So that's kind of like whatever the value is, that's kind of the inverse. Like, if, if, yeah, you, you want the total to be equal to 1. So that's going to give you that. Um, I'm not sure about this one minus adapt thing here. I guess that's just due to the nature of his adapt function. We'll see. Or maybe because it produces a negative number. I'm not sure. Nah, probably not it. I don't know. That's interesting. Okay, so then we got vert boss zero. A ref of vertices V zero. All right, okay, we will do that same thing up here. Let's just do that. Okay, so V zero. V one. V zero. V1, okay, that should be correct, and then let's do the final bit where we create this vector, so we have, we're adding together, let's have a look, oh, I hate these order of operations nonsense, let's put some parens in here so we actually can easily see what's going on. I was definitely meant to be writing this. I remember being in school and having a kind of confusing moment when the teacher was um, showing us like braces and stuff in math. Again, when I was very young, and it was just like, "Yeah, this is great. Why do it the other way? Like, why, why remember the other way when you've got a thing that's like completely, completely unambiguous about what's going to happen?" So yeah. I know what I was destined for. Right, okay, let's do times. Uh, so we're doing times, we're doing zero, one, two here, and those are, so let's do with x, because that's just gonna be easy for us. So x of vert plus zero times, uh, I'm actually gonna rename these to v plus zero because it's gonna make it slightly easier to type well, it's going to be slightly easier to fit everything in on those tiny resolutions. So x of v plus 0 times t0 um, plus um, x of v plus 1 times t1. Sure. Yeah, this really feels like... Still something that seems a bit odd about this though. One second, let's look at, oh, you know, because I want to actually look at the vector three version anyway. Vector three. Um, yes, so we're taking the first value and we're multiplying it by one minus the amount. So this would be here, where is it? This one will be the amount. This is one minus the amount. T1 here. So times one minus the amount. Yes. So this one is multiplied by the amount, and this is multiplied by. One times the amount. Am I missing something here? It looks very simple. And this is component wise addition, so this is really V3 plus 
and it's x, y, and z, which are coming from here. So that's our position that we passed in. So it's this. Um, so yeah, that's looking more and more like lerp to me. Am I going completely crazy? So no, the POS1 would be our vector A and POS0 would be our vector B. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so then this would be B3 lerp, B POS1, B POS0. And then we have to fill in the gaps. Oh yeah, and an amount, of course. We don't need this now. Mount single float, zero, bam. So now we just need to deal with the adapt function. Down with PEMDAS. PEMDAS. So I've got the problem problem exists. So normally it's probably just exists between, you know, keyboard and chair. Which one's Pendus? Evening. Rebel Elder. Good to see you. Thanks, Darius. So yeah, that looks correct then. All right, let's go with that. So now we've got to look at adapt. And I need to learn to spell again. So let's look at their common functions and see what adapt is. Um, so V0 and V1 are numbers of opposite sign. This returns how far you need to interpolate from V0 to V1 to get to zero. Okay. Sure, let's just take that as it is and we'll deal with that later. Defun. Adapt. V0. V1. Um, do some assertions. Um, okay, so we're saying not and what am I doing? Uh, V1, 0. Oh, no. That's not right. Wait a second. We just want to say that it's they're not the same. Not EQ. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let's go with that. They're not the same sign. Um, and then that we're not having this if settings adaptive thing. We just need this bit, which is divide zero minus v zero v one v zero. No, where are errors? Okay, well this one's complaining that verts is defined but never used. Really. That is true, actually. We just generate a value here, and um, vert. We never do anything with it. So let's do that. Um, and all we're going to do is we're going to go vector push. Man. I can feel the outside, like my brain is just kind of like starting to get sleepy. Um, we're pushing vert into verts. And then we're going to go and find out where the complaints are. Oh, there's mesh still here. Yeah, we got rid of that. We don't care about that anymore. And apparently that compiles. Groovy. Okay, so let's see where it crashes. 
Ah, fuck you. Right, and then the other thing we need to do is in March, at the end, we need to return that. So if we do um, March with, um, actually, no, we can just call do it, didn't we? We've got that setup function. Only five is not a single float. It's not an array. Oh yeah, that's very true. Why are we passing in a single number to uh, to the circle function? That's rather strange. Um, let's go look for our fun calls and see what we did. Yes. Yeah, that would be wrong. Hold on. I definitely read something incorrectly there, didn't I? Uh, what is it? It's not, not eBout. What do they call it? Oh no, they don't need to do that, do they? Um, So it's definitely this one up here, because we can see it right there, it's just wrong. So it's in this bit. And we call, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, we're not we're not calling a function there, we're looking up f eval, which is here, which is this bit here. So, oh, I'm just a burk, that's all it is. Right, let's go here. What was I doing? Yeah, of course, we've already done this, so. So in here, we're looking up into F eval. That's gonna be embarrassing. Um, B zero, that makes way more sense. Somebody already probably pointed that out in the chat and I just completely missed it as usual. Hey, here are some verts. <laughs> I wonder if they're useful. What's interesting to me, no, that, that kind of makes sense. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Dun, 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 dun. Prens, exponent, multiplication, division, adapt, multiplication, division, adapt, addition, subtraction. Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Oh, Pem oh I see. PEMDAS. I get you. I didn't realize division was after. Is, it, is division after multiplication? Is that true in C? Um, if it is, then I've made some mistakes in a lot of different code. Um, and shunting yard is a standard algorithm for doing infix to postfix conversion. Okay. Um, in case it wasn't clear, I dislike order precedence rules more than a bit. Uh, yeah, you didn't notice it either. I know it was really dumb, wasn't it? Um, bug number 13. Does anyone know how SPCL handles floating point numbers? Um, they are IEEE floats. And you can find this out by using features. The spec actually requires um, that you um, put IEEE floating point in your features list if you support them. Uh, oh, how does it allocate them? Like memory management? Um, that is a good question. Um, I mean, they're going to have to be boxed if they're put into... No, that's not necessarily true. No, shut my face. I don't have any details on that right now. <laughs> uh, Jason's saying boxed in the general case, but if it knows the type statically, it unboxes them. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, any slot that you've got that is meant to take... Well, the... <sighs> I mean, boxed, it could just be a 64-bit number with a type tag at the beginning and then just using the bottom 32 bits for the actual value, right? Because odds are, like, most of the places that are going to be taking... Like, if a struct holds a... Um, if a struct has a slot of type T, it's going to be a pointer, probably. So that's a 64-bit pointer on 64-bit machines, which means you've got quite a bit of space there to store things. Like, fixed numbers, for example, are... Um, 
just the value of the type tag, which is why you get uh, like 62 or 63 effective bits of storage. So it's like, what is it? Uh, most positive fixed dump, for example. And you do um, log that too. You can see you've got 62 bits spare um, because two of those bits are going to be used for type information. Fixed num is re represented with a very short, I think it's special cased um, type tag. I don't think that obviously there can't be that many type tags that are only exist in two bits. So most of them are kind of are longer than that. Um, Jason saying 32 bit floats are literals, I think, but 64 bit ones are boxed when they pass function boundaries. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, on 64 bit machines, they pretty much have to be, wouldn't they? Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Something like that, but yes. Um, Bug number 13, that is, uh, it, it, they have a lot of latitude with how they do it. They get to choose what that representation is. But SPCL is pretty decent about it. Um, Zuluino is saying, 100% like you, my number heavy C looks like CL because I can't stand to look at an expression and not in, like, yeah, not immediately know what's getting multiplied first. Yeah, I, I have the exact feeling, man. This brothers and parens. Um, okay. So we have something that produces, um, that we hope, what am I doing? Oh no, it was do it, wasn't it? Um, that produces a load of vector threes, which is cool. Let's see if we can display them. Um, I mean, the first thing to do, of course, is to come down here and get them up to the GPU. So actually, let's, let's, let's not do that there. So. Let verts, um, I'll just call them L verts for now. For the sake of space. Um, we're gonna do that. Then we're gonna go G verts is gonna be make GPU array. Um, taking L verts with an element type of Vec three, yeah. And now I'll kick them up to the GPU for us. Let's just check that that works. Not like this. Not like this. The value blurb is not of type list. Correct. It is not of type list. Why don't you wait a second? Did really? Hmm. Well, I don't like that. Um, with CRA freed. Oh, for God's sake. interesting i want to know what it's so distracted what is this shit okay all oh, right calls free cra at the end okay initial contents is elverts element type vec3 push cra here i see i was pretty sure the like C arrays, fucking hell, really? You can't make a C array just with an array of that sucks. Why don't we support that? That's just stupid. Let's go look at that now because <laughs> I'm just not happy with that. Initial contents scan for type, initial contents, fine. Um, yeah, see, array or vector, scan array for type, sure. So, ah, right, in that case, this is a bug. Let's, uh, let's do that and see where it's freaking out. Why is it... Oh, interesting. 
Right. Okay. So, the detail here is that because... Let's bring that up in the board. Let's go back to base. Oh no, um, marching cubes. Because Elverts is an extendable array, does that make it a, just a sequence? Does that make it not a... But that's still an array, right? Oh, but uh, fuck, I've got these... It's the order. It's this. If it's an array, it should be using array dimensions. Otherwise, if it's a sequence, then use some other way um, of doing it. God damn. Okay, so let's undo this a good chunk here and get back to where we were and see what breaks now. Um... A memory fault. Excellent. Well, that's good. Um, jolly good show, old bean. What have we got here? A thousand and twenty-four. That's a very round number, isn't it? It's kind of interesting. Um... That makes me suspicious. That makes me very suspicious. It makes me think that if we commented this out and put Lverts here and did do it and then called length on it, it would be not 1024. And the reason it's 1024 is because we are using um, array dimensions on it which is going to be returning the actual size of the array and not the fill pointer. Jace is saying list instead of sequence as well. Yes, we'll probably have to do something about that too. Um, oh, dear me. Okay, so... Let's jump back to make C array. You got some of this code that's just written when I <laughs> when I was pretty new to Lisp. Um, So here, if we look at array dimensions, this is going to be interesting. So if adjustable, there's got to be a predicate for that, really, isn't there? Adjustable array p, um, initial contents. Then we want to get the length of initial contents, because it can only be one dimensional if it's adjustable. Um, fuck is this <laughs> oh no it is it's a recursive function oh my god what the jesus was that oh right it's it's just walking down the lists and seeing how far they nest and using that as an estimate um and then it's going to go on from that guess um Yeah, let's stick list there for now. And if we're doing this, then we kind of want, yeah, if initial contents, then it should be E type case. Otherwise we're not gonna, yeah, let's go with that. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Um, what 
What is it? Monster cubes. Oh, yeah. You need to run the right goddamn function. Oh, it actually worked. Oh, oh did it. Unhandled memory fault. Are we back here again? Well, at least the dimensions are more sensible this time. Vec 3 to foreign. So, what is being passed in here? That looks unavailable arguments. That's mm, okay. What are the odds that there is something else that is using the. God damn it, what have we got here? A whole lot of shit. Um, dimensions. See array dimensions again. We can see it here. Um, total oh, array total size. There it is. Which is great unless you're adjustable. Um, let's just do a quick one here. If adjustable. Ray P data. Uh, no, row major a ref will still work. We just need to change this, don't we? Uh, size is if move this just for here. Length data, and then we'll use array total size in the other case, and we'll handle that. And then we'll use size instead of this, and then we'll revisit this later and make it right. Um, <laughs> well, that didn't look good. Why is that returning nil, for fuck's sake? What did I just change? Oh, god damn it. Right. Where's the make CRA? Stuff. Oh boy, okay. Um, let's just go and see where that file is because I can't find the damn thing. Oh, there it is. Oh, sorry, it's, it's not about being adjustable, it's about having a fill pointer. Oh, god damn it, you're right. Yes. So, array dimensions, if it does not have a fill pointer, and fill pointer if it does, you're correct. Absolutely correct. Um, how do we check if it has a fill pointer? Um, what is your property if you are... So it's gonna type error if it doesn't have a fill pointer. So we need something that tells us. Oh, that's interesting. There is no specific way to, to create an array for which adjustable array P definitely returns false. Oh, that sounds like a little bit of Lisp video right there. Um, hello, array has fill pointer. There we go. Thank you so much. Um, let 
What a nice, tidy little function. At least it's an ex a nice explanatory name. Um, so yes, now we need this to be fill pointer instead. So we were just lucking out on that before. Um, we need to... Yes, please save it, for God's sake. All right, we go here, we go and find this shit. We are doing the same thing. Um, Um, da, 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 that's so we're back to populate again, and I did something stupid in here. Yes. No. This should still have returned C at the end. C array at the end. So where did it go wrong? I suppose the first thing we can do is um, go back to marching cubes and get rid of that. Oh, there it is. There we go. There's our GPU array. Okay, what time we got? Oh man, it's nearly half 10 already. Fuck this. Okay, so we've got to get something going fairly quickly. Um, so let's go and start making a render function. So um, let's get rid of this clear color nonsense. Uh, as frame, uh, render, passing in. Um, our reset is going to go and def, uh, uh, mesh is going to be, do it. Um, oh, oh yeah, of course, now that makes a lot of sense. Right, so that will not work. Do nil, setf mesh do it and the reason is that these um, aren't necessarily compiling on the REPL thread um, in fact the top level stuff probably isn't it's being dispatched off to another thread with the compile um, <laughs> compile backers yes right so um, we've got a mesh kind of thing. There's our GPU array that we're going to put right there. Um, we're going to go when mesh, we're going to free it, and then we're going to replace it. So that's good. That's going to do that. And then we're going to say render um, mesh when mesh, render mesh. And we don't have a render function, so we're going to go into the render file. And we're going to make one defun render with our verts, uh, our mesh, which is just verts, so let's do that. Um, oh, that's actually kind of interesting because what we really need is a buffer stream. Um, def var bstream um, is nil. And so we're gonna do setf bstream to be make buffer stream. Uh, we're gonna be taking that mesh that we just made Move this down to a new line. Um, we are going to be not passing in an index array. We don't care about that. We're retaining the arrays, sure. The primitive is triangles, sure. And the base vertex is zero. That's it. That's the whole thing, actually. So that's all we need. That gives us the thing. So now we're not going to pass the mesh in at all. We are going to pass in vstream. vstream. There. Stream. Buffer stream, there we go. And then we're gonna map G over something, so some pipeline that we haven't written yet. Um, and we're gonna pass in the buffer stream, and then we're gonna have to pass in some details. And this is why, given the time, I might cheat a little. Um, I might look at some of our older code and um, just use that, and the, just to make sure we definitely get something up. Um, in time. Render.list because it's the last one for a couple of weeks. I'd really like to uh, I'd really like to see something. That'd be nice. 
Right, so let's go down here. Let's take this and see what we get to start with. Come on. Oh, am I, am I in an old one? Fantastic. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Well, we've got a whole lot of things we can remove. Then we can add that in. Um, we are going to have a vert, which is a vector 3. Um, we are going to not have anything else. And we are not going to have... We'll have a model to world, sure. World to view, view to clip. That all sounds good to me. Scale, sure, why not a scale as well. Um, then we'll get rid of this vert stage common thing. And we'll get over here and see where that revision was and we will take this function and we'll go have a look at that see what we can salvage from here okay so let's dump this in here and see what we can do so we're going to take the vector 3 that we've got coming in and we'll multiply it by scale. That sounds fine. And we make it into a vec 4. That's also good. That gives us a model position. And we get the world position by multiplying that by the model to world thing. The view position with the um, world to view. That's fine. Um, world norm. Oh, we're not really bothered about normals. So we don't have to worry about any of that. So we're going to clip space thing by doing view to clip. And that is everything we need. We don't need anything to do with the tangent normal base hoo-ha. We're just going to get the clip pos and we are going to remove everything else because we don't have UVs. And that means that our next function, the um, <sighs> the uh, thing, vert stage, think frag stage, um, is just going to take, well, it's going to take bugger all, isn't it? It's going to take nothing. Uh, because the only value that's returned here is this vector 4, and that goes off to GL. Um, so we're taking in no details, and what we are going to do instead is we're going to return a color. So we're going to make something red. And that is going to be that, and that is going to be that. No, position is not known, because that is vert. And then we are going to do def pipeline g um, some pipeline, because that's what we already decided to call it, which was stupid, but it works. Um, and then we're going to say the... Um, ah, we just need to do two of these. So we'll do... Um, the thing vert stage which takes a vec 3 and the thing frag stage which takes nothing we compile those and we have a pipeline and now all we have to do is satisfy these folks so one of these is really simple it's this one 1f0 um, and now we just have to do the rest. And probably, if we jump back into our thing again, we'll find a good candidate for that. In. Probably in things. That was the old file that used to hold a lot of stuff. There we go. Model to world. Here we go. Model to world. World to view. View to clip. That's actually what we need. Um, and we can always do something better than this soon. And the other thing is that the model to world space stuff came from the thing previously. So, oh, there it is. That was a long journey. Um, so we'll take that as well and get rid of this. And I will be back to the chat at some point, but I really want to finish. So let's do this. Let's clean up get modeled world space um, that is not going to happen um, in fact it doesn't really have a position does it like we haven't given it a position and we don't have a rotation so this whole model to world thing is actually the identity matrix so m for identity there we go um, now we need to pass in a camera so That takes that, so we can go back to base, and we can go render, and we're going to pass in a camera. We don't have a camera yet, so let's see what we do with it. Well, we have current camera, that's good. Um, that looks good to me, let's go to base. 
and let's just pass in current camera here. How dare you? Right. And maybe this will be a thing. Um, let's look at Bstream. It's nil. Let's call reset. That's not reset. Uh, let's call reset. And then we'll check it out. We've got Bstream, which is a buffer stream, which has got length of 888. <laughs> oh, fuck. What is this going to do? Let's clear the screen and let's go play. And who knows? We're not seeing anything. That doesn't bode particularly well, does it? Um, the stream is definitely true, so we are definitely getting into here. Is it that this? No, I don't think I'll. Um, we don't have any blending things set up, so that's not great. Um, whoops. Yep, so we're getting high again. Let's see what's going on there. going on oh Shimera's around hey um <laughs> Shimera has been saying instead of watching the stream I was busy trying to romance death since in Sims 4 excellent um Do, do, do. <laughs> yes, the safety zero does indeed strike. Um, okay, so what have we done? What have we missed? Let's look at base and make sure there's nothing obvious here passing in a camera passing in a B stream that's all mold the world is identity which means this bit does nothing um, oh Would you look at that? I see a sphere. It was way down there, but it is a sphere. Well, we assume it's a sphere. Uh, we don't have any normals for it. But yes, that is something we just generated apparently. Um, we could do something a bit more interesting with this. Let's... Um, Okay, so where are we? 33, good. Let's go to marching cubes. See, we're going over a space 10 by 10, and then we're only generating a very small sphere. So let's, um, let's start by making it eight. Um, let's call reset. And then let's back up until we can see something. There it is. Still seems very small. Where do you get that feeling that there is a 2.5 in here somewhere that I didn't notice? No, we're evaluating circle. It's rather odd. I know what it is. I know what it could be anyway. If we go to cameras. Reset camera, check that out. It was really helpful at the time when we were doing the other stuff. Um, but not so helpful now. 
So hopefully now when we back up, there it is. Okay, that's a bit better. Good. And what we're going to do now, let's uh, actually, let's just check something out. So let's do um, position of current camera, which is that. Shove those in there. So when we reset, we're back here. That's good. Um, then we're going to go to marching cubes. And what are we going to do? Let's change this circle function. Um, let's wibble it a bit. Sign of the y coordinate of v3 point. There we go. So that it's really hard to tell, obviously, because of the lack of fucking shading and stuff like this. But that is a 3D mesh we've generated um, of a deformed sphere. And what's going to be the quickest way for us to be able to do anything with this? Like, what's a? Is there a sensible way of generating normals? I think I've got some horrible, untested, shitty ways that are in Nineveh. Let's see if there's any one normals. There we go. Um, are these GPU functions or are these? Yes, they are. Um, <laughs> oh, and they, they're doing it from uh, density functions as well. That's interesting. Vec two to float, vec two to float, vec three to float. Let's let's take this and see if we can hammer it into something that vaguely works. Um, let's turn it into a regular function. Let's um, it takes a function, it takes a position, it takes an offset. What's the offset for? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, we're gonna change that actually to let the offset just be configured here. So 0.01F, something like that. Um, 0.1, yeah, that's probably, probably good enough. Pretty crappy, but it'll do. Um, funk all the funk at these different positions. Does that compile? <laughs> V3 normalize. Oh, man, I love some of our code, to be honest. I mean, this might not work, but... <laughs> oh, I left some shit in there. There we go. Um, okay, so let's take this. No, let's, let's leave this around here. Um, here's our circle function. And then up here, oh, I've already forgotten the name of that function. Let's just change this. Gen norms. That's probably wrong because I haven't tested this stuff, but fuck it, doesn't matter. Uh, we're in here. We are going to change this up a bit because we are going to need normals as well. So. Gen normals. Um, oh, takes a function, which is our density function, and a position. Um, which which position do we care about? Let's try v plus zero. Um, let's do that, and we're going to sample around that position, and it's going to generate a normal, and then we're going to push this onto. Um, normals let's try that uh, so now we need to add a normals uh, argument up there and that means where is wrong now no uh, Marcel is now expecting normals um, which is another set of vector threes um,
And I'm sorry I'm not answering your question. I saw someone in chat asking something sensible. And I'm not on it because I'm trying to work out if we can get this done yet again. I'm distracted. Um, and then multiple value bind. Vert norms. Um, we'll do it from March. Do this. And then we're going to do things slightly differently. So we'll do make GPU array. We're going to need a... Um, a new type we're going to need a gpu structure so def struct g we got 20 minutes um it's our little vert type again and the type is going to have a position which is a vec3 and a norm which is a vec3 and that's it that's all we're going to need and we're going to come down here and we're going to say our gpu function is not going to have any initial values yet um it's going to have an element type of vert um, and it is also going to have a uh, dimensions which are equal to the length of verts. Um, I think that's okay. That's going to be our uh, don't do that. That's going to be our result. Spit on my keyboard. That's a really good thing to do. Gross. Um, and then we're going to loop. for um, b inverts, uh, not for, in across verts, for n across norms, we should assert that the lengths are the same, equals length of verts is equal to length of norms, just in case, uh, I'm going to be doing all things wrong at the moment. Do set f. A ref C. Oh yeah, we need to get this GPU or somewhere. So with GPU array um, as C array, uh, temp name is going to be C array, and the GPU is res. We're going to do this, and we're going to do set up A ref C. Um, how do we do this? Um, S is equal to this. I think we can do this. C array for i from zero. Um, we'll do i. Set f vert cos of s is equal to v. Um, and vert pos norm is n. No. Learn to type. Right. But, um, okay, so with that done, hopefully we can turn res and maybe, maybe this is something. Let's just run, do it, and see what happens and see what crashes. Uh, that's not a number. That's very true. Um, Yes. Okay, so we parts the wrong values in here. Um, of course. All right. Okay. So because we ported this from the GPU, um, it was statically typed, and this is obviously not. So we've just got to add a little bit of information here, so it knows what's going on. Somebody probably already spotted that. So sorry. Ugh. Typing like a gibbon. Um, oh, I thought it was all so simple and pretty. Now I've ruined it. Um, oh. Never mind. That was correct. The value of that is not a single fl oh, really. Yeah, that's a good point. This function is going to right. 
Wait a second. Where is this going wrong? Let's actually go and use the stack trace again. There. All right. It's saying that subtract is getting a single value. Oh yeah, of course it is. You fool. That's the point. That's what you're trying to do. Yep, those are the wrong way around. No, yes, that's the wrong way around. Good, so that could be something. Um, right, let's do reset and see what happens and play. Interesting. Um, very interesting, especially because we haven't changed this yet. So the fact it works at all is kind of miraculous. Um, with slots cos norm vert. Um, wait a second. And scale. Oh yes, every place that we use vert here, which is just there, was wrong. And then this pipeline now takes a vert, not a other thing. Um, SLDB. Actually, going to play stop and CLS and start again. There's our wibbly thing. Um, that's really good, actually. If the uh, B stream is really of the type I think it is. Yeah, it's of type vert. Cool. That's good. Um, and then the idea is that we could return multiple values from here. We could return norm. And then over in the frag stage, we would receive a norm of vec3. And then we would say let norm be normalized. Norm, how much time we got? 47. Um, Enfiano is saying volume is incredibly low for me compared to the other streams. I haven't had that complaint from anyone else yet, so I will have to bear that in mind. Um, we've done this, done this. That's the arguments are no longer compatible. Um, they will be soon. Back three. Let's bring up that other thing and say continue. Code still running. I love that. I love it. Right. Um, and now we want to say that the uh, light deer is um, one one one, um, and we're going to normalize it, and then we're going to um, take the dot product between the norm and the light deer, and we're going to. Um, Lambert between 0 and 1, and we're going to say that is the light amount, and we're going to scale this color by that, and light deer is unidentified, um, because that is not star, and <laughs> that's so wrong, it's so wrong, it's hilarious. Um, great. <laughs> awesome. Right. Okay. Never mind. Um, and a tiny bit of ambient, whatever. Yeah. So I'm assuming that that, <laughs> that normal function is very wrong looking at what that did to the shape. But um, regardless, we can still move around it. And just having a bit of texture on there at least lets us see what's what's going on. 
Uh, talk, yeah, tell me what, a bit of texture. Uh, and uniform. Um, see, another thing that's kind of annoying is the fact that this we're in this tiny sub-window down here. Let, let's fix a couple of things quickly. So base, let's do this in a really hacky way. Of course, because it's the only way we do things here. Set uh, viewport resolution of the current viewport um, to be the um, current surface the surface resolution bam there we go that's a bit better a bit easier to see and then um, let's uh, let's have a texture so def var sampler is nil um, let's go and we don't have any code for doing this now we have dirt around why did I remove everything that was stupid uh, load image to texture perfect um, let's do ASDF and then it's what's it AS oh uh, system like relative path or something like this yeah system relative path name uh, and it's going to be media and I don't know rust um, let's do that If we do that, oh yeah, it's got to be relative to some system, and it's relative to play with verts. And then we're going to set f sample in that. Uh, ooh, I didn't like that at all. Of course, because this is meant to be sampler. Let's make sure that was compiled, and let's just go and dump this in the repl and see what happens. Um, yeah, apparently we've got a sampler now. Sorry about clearing that so fast. I said it. I know I said I was, wasn't going to do that so much. Um, let's pass in this texture here. Let's go over to render down here. Take a sampler. That can complain. We can compile this. Uh, we can go back to the error and we can say continue and now everything's fine. And we're going to do something here called Sam, which is going to be pass in sampler. Um, uniform up here is going to be Sam and it's going to be a sampler 2D um, it's not that it's sampler and now instead of this horrible catastrophic mess we can just ignore it and say texture of Sam at the UV coordinates we don't have Hooray! I didn't think about that that was stupid um, so yeah actually we can't do that fuck Implicit services are terrible. Um, yeah, whatever. We'll leave that for now. <laughs> but anyway. This is what we generated. We generated some mesh that would look better if I didn't put horrible... Uh, if I didn't generate terrible normals. Um, if anyone has a, um, a function for generating normals... Please submit it to Nineveh, because the one that's in there is shit. Now we have fireworks going off. Awesome. Okay. Sorry. Let's uh, let's go through this again. Dun 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 dun. So Firegrazer says, "Are you writing exercises for a book?" No. Um. I'm actually going to close the door while the fireworks going off. One second. Right. Um, you sent a PR my way that calls set up Lisp REPL in Def Simple Main Look, Cool, I'll have a look at that. So Sly works properly. Ooh. Okay. We'll have to have a look at that because I don't really want, like... Um, yeah. We don't want to have to have, to have like backend like um, tooling specific hacks in Nineveh. I'd rather those were in a separate library, um, maybe in live support or something like this. But um, oh, Dave X unit saying is a bit quiet. Okay. Um, do 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 do. 
<laughs> right, so... Oh, did I leave the window open? No. It's just loud. Oh, I'm so bummed out about that silly function for generating normals. Why is it so crap? Um, normals for implicit... Ugh. Surface. I can't type. Um... This is written in math. No, I need I need a, a hacky version. <laughs> I need a quick, <laughs> quick and dirty one. Have a look at that because that looks kind of familiar that looks kind of similar to what we had but the good news at least is we got the marching cubes bit working so we managed to copy some code from python to lisp without too many problems um and once we get some decent normals in here this won't look entirely shit and that's actually really handy um we'll be doing more things with meshes so I'll, I'll get some basic stuff set up um for another week and um, the one I'm not sure if... Because dual contouring is one of the ones I've been wanting to do for ages. So we probably will do that. Um, and there's another implementation by Boris the Brave as well on that. So that would actually be quite good to do. Um, it's interesting because it has some... Um, the way it adjusts the surface is using some um, least squares, like error minimization functions. And I've never written those before. So it would be kind of nice to see what the implementations are in a way that I understand. Um... The real paper I want to do is the one for um, dual marching cubes, which what you do is you take the, um, you create a, a graph that is dual to the ISA service and then you do marching cubes over that. So this code is still gonna probably be useful, um, but yes, we'll have to see. Um, so yeah, X plus one. Oh, so he's doing plus one minus one. Yeah, position plus some offset minus offset. I think we could change our offset, but I don't think that's going to help that much. Um, yeah, let's do it as one. Don't think this will do it, though. Oops, repl. Uh, not do it, you dumbass. Reset. No. That made no difference. So wait, oh, wait a second. Yeah, so it's plus one, which is this, minus one, which is this, subtracted them from each other. And the same for y, and the same for z, and then normalize them. That's what we did, actually. Huh. Well, the density function isn't going to be that far off, because otherwise the object wouldn't have been fine. It is possible that... No, see, I'm... When we look at the edge of this mesh... Holy crap, they're really going for it out there. When we look at the edge of this mesh, we can see that it's it's tight. It's only the, the uh, shading we're doing, which is garbage. Um, of course, it could be the way I'm using it. Um, but all we're doing is dot producting between the normal and the light direction. So there shouldn't be anything too exciting going on there. And then clamping it between 0 and 1, because it's going to, like on the back faces, it's going to get weird. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to look into that. It'll be something simple I'm not doing, but that's fine. 
Um, anywho, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with what we've got here. We've got something to start with. We've got our basic implementation. And it turns out the Marxian Cubes one is very simple. Um, we're not doing anything too fancy with the adaptive part of it yet. Well, that's actually one last thing. Since we've got maybe seconds remaining, let's just go back to Marxian cube, Cubes and look at adapt. And instead of doing like pushing it towards the edges, let's just see what happens if we just returned 0.5, because that's something I wanted to see, and then reset. Yeah, check that out. Look at how, look at all the edges are now just like 45 degree angles. Chunk, 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 chunk. And up here again, chunk, chunk, chunk. Yeah, rubbish. Oh, you know what? No, no. No, no, that's good. I was starting to think that was going to affect our normals, but of course it's not because we're taking the normals from the um, from the uh, distance function itself, which is continuous and perfect. So yeah, nice. Anyway, that's a lot. Meta Yang, you're correct. Push. Let's push it. Um, not like, yeah. Let's just leave out tons of stuff. And the very useful commit is going to be wee. All right, that's our stream. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'll see you in a few weeks after the Kickstarter. For those who sign up for the newsletter for Talespire, you will hear from me very soon. If you don't mind, I'll probably put a very short video out when the Kickstarter release goes, so you can expect to see that pop up in the stream as well. Um, just, just basically, yeah, this is the. I would really like to be able to have this job for a few years where I get to make games. Otherwise, I have to go and hunt down something else, uh, which would be cool. But it would be fun to have started a company and do something independent. So thank you so much. See you next week. And um, ciao.